CIFCentralCoast.tv bringing you the action from Levy Center on the campus of Santa Clara University. Kirsten Fairchild's Casey Jackson bringing you the boys D2 final. The Junipero Sarah Padres in their traveling blue and gold taking on the top seeded Archbishop Mitty Monarchs in their white, black and gold. Drew Gordon, excuse me, Aaron Gordon, Drew Gordon's little brother, Aaron Gordon wearing number 32 jumping center for Mitty as well as the six foot seven, 20, Stephen Grossi wearing number 24. Mitty getting things underway first. This is the point guard, Jack Bible, the five foot 10 senior guard. Quickly, a three-point attempt, rims out. Skying for the rebound is the point guard for Sarah, Andre Miller, the five foot 10 junior. Nice packed gymnasium we got for this D2 final. A lot of anticipation for this game. Number 24, Jordan a lot of talent on the floor. First, first team foul. Jordan Andre White called on the foul for Mitty. He's wearing number 24. A six foot senior guard, he is the point guard. As Miller makes his first, let's get to the rest of the lineup. Number 15, Neil Vranica for Mitty, the six foot six senior forward. Thomas Peters is wearing number 30, he's a six foot senior forward as well. And Aaron Gordon, six foot eight junior forward and wearing number 32 for Mitty. Sarah on defense, this is Miller, Jason Barsacchini is wearing number two. He is the point guard, excuse me, the shooting guard. Vika Jimenez, Steven Grossi, and Henry Caruso rounding out the lineup as Gordon misses his first attempt. Mitty trying to get the ball on the low block to Gordon. He's their go-to guy. Highly touted, one of the best players in the country. These two teams split their round robin play. Both compete in the West Catholic Athletic League. Mitty's the one seed, Sarah is the two. After Mitty won the tournament. Three point attempt on the way, that's off the mark, off the rim, Gordon giving chase. Gordon, will this be the first slam of the night? Nope, he gets stripped. We've seen that one before. Once he gets that breakaway, that thing's going down hard. I did a St. Francis game, three Gordon slams, everyone different than the last. Bad luck there for Mitty. Three guys around the ball came loose. Caruso with the bucket, four nothing Sarah. Gordon. Gordon doesn't fall. Gordon from the right side still can't find. We've got a foul going against the Monarchs. Sarah couldn't ask for a better start. Absolutely. Gordon just couldn't get that one to fall. Had two or three decent shots at it. Nothing really good and balanced. When he gets good and balanced, that thing usually goes down. Two minutes gone, Sarah located in San Mateo with a four nothing lead over the team from San Jose and a chance to make it a three point play as Caruso heads to the line. It's what I like about that particular play with, with Gordon. Gordon is a guy you gotta get your body into, no pump fix, cause he's not gonna go for him. He's seen them all. Great play there by Caruso, just took it through the body. That's the best way to go at a shot blocker, and Gordon can block shots well. Mitty trailing 7-0, the defending D2 champ. Bible from the right side. Bible with the first bucket. Mitty's on the scoreboard, trailing by 5, 5.45 left to go in the first. Bible, extremely physical player. Bible with the steal. Bible taking it in, laying nice. it in from the left side. The senior who gets the offense going is doing just that for his head coach, Tim Kennedy. Well, that's an excellent finish with the left hand. Five, 10 left to go in the first. Long two point attempt, back iron, Gordon skies for the rebound. Gordon not afraid to take it coast to coast by himself. Seen that a lot. Viable, spin move, over to Gordon. 
Long distance to drain by Thomas Peters, a six foot six senior forward who did not play basketball last year. What the heck was he doing then? It's a one point <laughs> ball game. Showing some nice ability there with that little 50. From the left footer. elbow, fade away, doesn't fall. Gordon's there. Gordon, spin move. Gets his first bucket of the night. Mitty, just like that, erases a 7 0 deficit. They're up 8 7 with 4.15 left to go in the first. And right. yeah. on his feet to call a timeout, Sarah head coach. Chuck Rapp in his 12th year calling a timeout. Well, you just saw you, you can expect a lot of great things from Gordon. He handles the ball, shoots it, does everything for this team. You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section. And you can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on CIFCentralCoast.tv. Click on Buy DVD and you can order order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by CIF Central Coast TV. Quick start here tonight. Mitty 26 and three overall, went 13 and one to win league. Sarah 23 and five overall, went 11 and three in league to finish second. Those three losses came to Sacred Heart Cathedral, Saint. Ignatius and Mitty. Such a deep league. I mean, the, the competition these guys face night in, night out is unparalleled pretty much in California, at least Northern California. Aaron Gordon, the junior. Now at about 100%, according to his head coach, Gordon struggled with undiagnosed mononucleosis back at the start of the year. Saw him when he was around 85% midway through January. Now he is feeling good, playing good, and looking good. Sarah out of the timeout. <laughs> and on every coach's uh, recruiting list. One of the top list. five recruits in the nation for sure. Great attitude too, works his, works his tail off. Great combination of skill and heart. Too hard as it rims out. Here's Bible. Bible weaving, finding a way to the lane. He has done a layup from every side and now straight up the middle. No fear. Taking it coast to coast. Again, awesome display of strength and, and finishing ability. Mitty, 10 unanswered points. Can Sarah break the drought? Nope. Bible's there. Excuse me. Mitty's number three, Connor Peterson, the six foot two sophomore guard with that rebound. Bible feeding Gordon for the touch play, the one touch. I think they've done that one before. Great look, great look by Bible. And that is a Bible foul and heading to the line to shoot two will be Andre Miller. Bible uh, catching his breath. Well, he's had taken it coast to coast twice and with a lot of effort, great finishes on both, both efforts. Sarah checks in. One, Joseph, Samora, Joseph Samora, the five foot ten junior guard, for the first time he's wearing number one. And Franikar returns to the lineup for Mitty. 12 9, Mitty leads. Great, great response after that initial onslaught that Sarah put on. Yes. Franikar, the left hander. Front rim. Sarah Ball. Good pace to this game for both teams, both playing their style of ball. Both coaches, Sarah graduates, will tell you more as the game goes on. Wide open. Decided not to go for it. Now wide open, nope. 
Partially deflected by Gordon, and Sarah comes up empty. And we've got a foul on Sarah away from the ball. Barsakini. I think Barsakini's seen that little. Gordon put his finger up like, I, I'm going to the hoop, looking for a little alley-oop, and Barsakini's seen that one before. I think he wasn't going to let Gordon have any of that stuff, just push him off the block. Got called for it, too. Good D. Samora with the ball. Matt JJ wearing number 40 into the lineup for Sarah. Sarah relying on the outside short shots. They just aren't falling. Bible to Gordon. That's Gordon. ridiculous right there. Great chemistry between those two, between Bible and Gordon. Yeah. Great. They're seeing each other really well so far. Gordon nice. allows Caruso to take a shot. Caruso pulls his team within three. Minute 34 left to go in the opening quarter of play. As Bible again going coast to coast. Offensive foul. And you can sense, I mean, you see Bible every once in a while, he's going to get a little out of control. First time, though. Our officiating crew today, Eddie Sutton, four, Ralph We got Ugalar. some famous names going here today. Jeff Heyer. Andre Miller, Eddie Sutton. Come on, where are we? <laughs> Sorry. Makes it, I agree. When he, I asked the first name I asked. It said Eddie Sutton. I gave a look. Sarah with a chance to tie it. Andre Four Miller. Pull within one. Now a chance, still rimming out. Gordon with the rebound. Franikar with the feed inside to the big guy, number 55 off the glass and down. It's six foot five junior center Brandon Farrell who will head to the line to try and make it a three point play. Well, I tell you, Mitty's just got one guy after another. Thomas Short with size. I mean, they come out with skill and size. Six foot one senior guard, Thomas Short, wearing number five, checks in. As Bible has a well earned rest. Back iron. The young contestant rebound for Jimenez. Less than a minute to go in the first. Sarah trailing by five. Twenty on the shot clock, 42 in regulation. Jimenez, back iron, Vranikar. Uh, if Sarah was shooting any percentage at all, they'd be right in this game or with the lead. They're just Shots not, seem a not, little rushed. Yeah, they're not. They're not getting anything to fall. A little hurried. Gordon, just a game of one and one for Gordon as Caruso on Henry the wrist foul, for the foul. 30, Henry Caruso, first personal, third team foul. Just shows you the ball handling skills of Aaron Gordon there. JJ and Barsakini return Jay for Sarah. 17.6 seconds remaining, shot clock is turned off. JJ on Gordon. Many fans count Gordon down, spin move in the paint, heads to the line to shoot two. It's a next level play right there. Little ISO going, isolation. Aaron Gordon to the line, shooting two. Gordon's big brother, Drew Gordon, started off at UCLA, now at University of New Mexico. Grossi and Miller return for Sarah. Andrew Scott waiting to check in for Gordon. He's a six foot four junior forward. White returns to the lineup for Mitty as well. Jordan White has checked in for the Monarchs. 
One second from the half court line doesn't fall Mitty despite a slow start giving up seven points comes back after the first quarter Mitty leads it 17-11. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CIFCentralCoast.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message out to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. Our first mascot of the evening, the Archbishop Mitty Monarch is here and getting a little funky, yeah. Alongside Casey Jackson, I'm Kirsten Fairchild. We're loving this Mitty Monarchs band. The girls capturing their 24th Division II title. Yes, you heard me right, 24. Although the men's coaching staff knew how many titles the girls won, they couldn't share with me how many titles the boys had won. Do they all just run together? Is that kind of what they're thinking? Tim Hett Kennedy, the head coach for Mitty in his fourth year. He's a six foot five, former Sarah Padre, who competed at Loyola Miramont, then went over and played six years in Portugal and Spain. I knew there was a reason I didn't like him. He played at Loyola. <laughs> oh, watch out, Santa Clara Bronco. Sarah, wow. to start things off here in the second quarter. No, he's a great guy. He's wonderful. Absolutely. Graduated in 95, the same year as Tom Brady. Played freshman basketball with Brady. Brady yes, elected to pursue another <laughs> sport. <laughs> and I don't think he has any mixed emotions about who he wants to come out on top of this game his alma mater or foul away from the ball he menace called on his second personal that is the fifth both teams with five fouls here at the start of the second bible back in to work his magic Sarah and this man-to-man -man defense. Gordon beginning the second quarter on the bench. Nice. And the three from the six foot six Thomas Peters. You said he didn't play last year. Didn't play last year. This isn't his first year of organized basketball. Amazing, nice player. I think it's his first year on varsity, however. Oh, gotcha. Vranikar to Bible. Minute gone, Mitty leads it 20 to 11. Bible right away knows where Peters is. Bible just an assist du jour all the time. Well, and he just kind of picks up. Uh, Peters just kind of picks up while Gordon's getting a break and he's getting the same passes that Bible gets. Timeout on the floor, 6.51 left to go in the half. Mitty leading 22-11. Want to have your game broadcast live on the internet and able to watch it again and again on On Demand while making money for your sports program? Want to give your students the opportunity to create their own broadcast for your school's athletic events? Then contact us at info at kbcsports.com. We offer season packages for, for schools, a full curriculum for your students, and an opportunity to raise up to $10,000 $10, for your sports program. Again, that's info at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677-3246. Alongside former Santa Clara Bronco, Casey Jackson, I'm Kirsten Fairchilds. So glad to be part of the CIF Central Coast TV broadcast of the Boys D2 Championship between West Catholic Athletic League schools, Junipero Sarah and Archbishop Mitty. Arch rivals. I think everyone's an arch rival of everyone in the West Catholic <laughs> yeah, Athletic so League. At some point in time. And it doesn't matter the sport either. <laughs> Great atmosphere though. 
Pass down low gets contested. And sticking with it is Caruso. Caruso perhaps been the only threat early on as far as offensive scoring going. Number 30, Thomas Peters, second personal. He's had a really nice first half and I love the way he takes the hoop, not no fear at all. Just take gets his body into the into the defender, no matter what his size is. If it goes, it's good, it's great, but if he doesn't, he's getting on the line no matter what. Caruso a junior. Gordon into the lineup. And Gordon with the rebound. Ten point lead for Mitty. 6.30 left to go in the half. Feed down low to Vranikar. Turn around off the left hand. Gordon passes as well. Vranikar and him on the same page. Padres come back. Doesn't fall. Nope. Got the tip. Nope. Bible with the rebound. Sarah really having a hard time getting anything to fall at this point. Barsakini with the read. Henry Caruso. And it's Caruso with the bucket. Time out on the floor, 5.52. 24-14, Mitty out on top. Not, not sure Coach Kennedy felt great about the effort that, that his boys were putting out right there. KBCSports.com will be providing live audio coverage of the state regional basketball championships as well as the finals. March Madness, come, March Madness comes to high school basketball in California on March 17th for the regional basketball championships. Four venues of coverage around the state. Then the following weekend, March 23rd and 24th, it's the California State Basketball Championships. You can catch it all on kbcsports.com, your home for high school sports. Midi ball out of the timeout. Sarah head coach, Chuck Rapp, again in his 12th year 1986 Sarah grad. In fact, Tim Kennedy was his junior varsity coach at one time while he was the varsity coach. Franikar finding the open man. Miller with the rebound for Sarah. No call. Late call. Offensive yep. player Gordon, control Gordon foul. Is, Gordon got his feet set right in front of him. First personal, Connor down. Peterson wearing number three checks number in three, for Connor Mitty. Peterson checks in for the Monarchs. Grossi took, tried to take it right straight through him and got the call against him. Miller guarding Bible. He throws it away. Don't see that very often. Take care of the ball extremely well. Really important for uh, Sarah to get something going. They're, you know, Mitty's not going to look back if they if they can't produce. Sarah can't produce. Mitty's not going to look back. They're just going to make it a train wreck. Three-point attempt. Sarah needs some love. They'll head to the line to shoot three on the foul by White. Jason Barsacchini, the five foot nine Number senior guard, to the charity stripe. Second personal, seventeen foul. Really difficult. You don't want to be making that uh, contest that shot too much. The only thing that can happen, really, it's kind of a lower percentage shot. You don't want to be fouling somebody with a kind of an unorthodox looking three. That was the seventh team foul. Chance to make it two of three for Barsakini. 4.57 left to go in the half. And he does make it two of three. It's an eight point ball game. Bible puts it into a fourth gear. <laughs> Back iron, trying to be chased down and what an effort by Peterson. Coaches love seeing that. Number 20, side to Monaco. Number 40, Matt Jaje check in for the Padres. Jaje returns to the lineup as side to Monaco, the six-foot senior 
Guard wearing number 20 out on the floor for Sarah. Plays like that give you, get you playing time with a coach. Gordon called on a walk. Oh, that's Gordon, that's the first time I've ever seen him talk to an official like that. I think he just wanted to know what he did. Yeah. He wasn't questioning the call. He yeah, just no, he always plays, he like water off a duck's back. Yeah, yeah. Nothing bothers him. Kicked ball will reset the shot Kicked clock. 425 left to go in the half. Sarah outscored seven to five in this quarter. Russo will try this again. Nope, Bible with the steal. Great. Bible, one man to beat, loses the handle. Good numbers for Sarah. Not ready. Sarah having extreme difficulty getting, just getting shots off at this point. Bible stolen. Caruso again, putting it through. Could be the spark, they need that. Need something to happen. Six Some point positive. ball game. Gordon will head to the line to shoot two. That is the seventh is Sarah down. foul, but it's a shooting foul, and Gordon will have two opportunities. Number 30, Henry Caruso, second personal, 17 foul. Just when you think there Caruso isn't really or rather Eric much of a chance for shots. the move that he, Gordon makes to, for, for the ball to go in. Just Looks like everybody ooh and ah that it didn't go in. It looked like it should have gone in there. Having a little difficulty on the free throw line at this point. I think that's two in a row of this front rim not finishing the shot. Gotta snap that thing off. I think he knows that though. <laughs> yeah. 0 2. Caruso with the rebound. 325 left to go in the half. Zamora back onto the lineup. Franikar with the steal. Zamora trying to keep that dribble going. Sarah Ball. Gotta love to see, love see kids diving on the floor, chasing, working hard. That's just uh, great stuff. It's filled to the rafters in here, Casey. Absolutely. Both sides. Five on the shot clock, and it's drained by Andre Miller. Sarah needs to get as many offensive threats going as possible. Less than three to go in the half. Gordon loses it. Kicked ball. They're going to say Sarah ball. Just what you want to see from Sarah to finish off the half, hopefully getting a little momentum going, get, getting back in the game. Within four, 2.49 left to go. Middy's half court D just smothering. Gordon on Caruso. Zamora. Just impenetrable at the moment. 10 to shoot. Gives it up. And that's a foul on Zamora. Great half court defense by Mitty there, creating the turnover. It just, you know, it, it just keeps happening over and over again. And thought that Sarah got a little spark from Miller there. Need a lot more of that. And is the eighth team foul on Sarah as Peters heads to the line. considering Peters is considering walking on at USF, but he's being looked at by a number of D2 schools as well. Yeah, nice future for not a lot of experience, amazing. Is 
Vranikar being looked at by UC San Diego. As Mitty extends its lead to six with 2.14 left to go in the half. Vranikar hasn't had the, hasn't dropped many threes yet. That's kind of what his specialty is. Another rebound by Vranikar. Gordon finding the open man. It's Peters. Rims out, bounces Sarah's way. Minute 45 left to go in the half. Thinking better of the three attempt. A little stagnant. Miller off. finding his way through traffic, coming back down with it. Miller still can't hit. Bounces Gordon's way. Vranna Carr. Offensive player control foul. Things are a little raggedy right now for both teams. Bible to come on for the Monarchs as well as Caruso. Minute 18 left to go in the half. Sarah trying to cut into this six point deficit. Everybody trying to get the officials to think about what Gordon did on the last possession down. He probably carried the ball. Yeah. Can't lift it up over a person's head while you're dribbling over him. Three point attempt, back iron. Both teams are real ragged right now. Yeah, looking a little uh, unsettled. It's been a hard fought first half. 35 seconds, 15 to shoot. And that's called against Baraschini. That's off the ball, away from the ball. Didn't really see it. Ninth team foul. 34 seconds left. That turns the shot clock off. Baraschini looking to see what he did. And official get, showed him a little elbow he threw. 20 seconds remaining in the half. Bible being guarded by Miller. I, I don't really see anybody having any clear advantage right now. There's no momentum by either team. Bible throws it away. Mitty wanted to call five seconds left. Four, three, two. Gordon firing to White. White for three, didn't get it off. An uneven second quarter by both teams, but Mitty still up by six, just as they were after the first. Mitty leading 26-20. Casey, your impressions? Yeah, again, a real ragged finish to the half. Mitty, at times, was very superior, but Sarah, you know, hung in there, and nothing, nothing really blew him away. Gordon was Gordon was very good as as advertised, but. Mitty finished off playing kind of a ragged end of the first half, and nobody really has any momentum. I was looking for somebody to do something there at the end to create some momentum for either team, and nobody did anything. But again, I mean, Mitty's just, they're up by six, and really kind of a ragged game so far. Stay tuned to CIFCentralCoast.tv. Mitty versus Sarah, a CCS Division II Boys Championship will be decided when we return to Santa Clara University. 3.16 left to go in this ball game. High formation, third and three from the 45 of the Wolverines. And this time, holy cow! Dion almost hands it to the Westview player. He's gonna run this to the five, 10, touchdown, Wolverines! How did that happen? Jason that was Snyder. Holy cow. He was in the backfield before the running back could even get the handoff. He took the handoff from he Dion. He took the ball right out of Dion's hands and just. <laughs> Holy cow. Can't say I've seen that one very often. Snyder comes shooting in from the A gap. 
I think Dion froze when he saw him. He's ready to hand off to his running back. He froze when he saw him and just hand, let him have the ball. 12 seconds to go. Oh, you could hear a pin drop. Five, four, three, two. Get the snap off. Last play of the game. Brewster rolls right. Gets away from two sacks. Dons win. Sack at the 20-yard line. What a game. And number 40, Lucas Zinder with the game-saving sack. And there is heartbreak on one sideline and a jubilation on another. Offset eye for the Grizzlies as Keeney takes it under center. They'll send a man in motion. Pitch back to Bird on the sweep. Bird finds a seam. He might go, folks. 20, 15, 10. Drags a tackler. Touchdown! Bird goes 38 yards for the touchdown on the sweep. One more snap is all it's going to take. And there you have it, folks. Your 2011 Division I Sack Joaquin section champions, the Granite Bay Grizzlies, as they defeat Pleasant Grove 30 to 24. Jacqueline Williamson. Her serve is over. Dug by Holt. Giblin going back to Holt near side. Cut shot. Kept alive. Back in one by Cathedral. And this one is out as Caston on Hill sends it wide. And the Cathedral Dons have won the title. 16-14 in game five. Thomas with the ball, swings it out to Norris. Cameron Taylor tried to block that one away. Norris with a strong take, blocked by B.J. Anya. Huge block, Robinson leading the break the other way, gets it to Grant, oh. slam dunk Jeremy Grant off the feed from James Robinson. What a play by the stack. Hancock to his immediate left. Two receivers far side, one near side. Hancock on a counter, right side. He's inside the 10. He bounces off a tackler at the 10. The 5. Touchdown, Helix. And behind Hancock, the field is littered with white jerseys on the turf. Wow. Hancock not to be outdone by his fellow uh, <laughs> playmakers on offense. Put on a show on that short 12-yard touchdown run. Looked like he was down after three yards. Just threw a defender on the ground. As sophomore Chris Carter sets under center in their tight wing formation. Lycos in motion. Second back through is Freeman. Freeman just knocking people over. Look at him run. Breaks through. Four tackles. And now it's just a foot race to the end zone. And Freeman's going to go the distance. Touchdown Imperial on the first play of the second half. Second and six for Imperial from their own 47. They're going to give it to Freeman again off the right, left side. And Freeman gets by one wave and down across the 20, 40-yard line. Still on his feet. Look at him run down to the 20-yard line. One man to beat. Gets by him. Touchdown, Freeman. How did he do that? Holy cow. 64-yard touchdown run. His fifth of the game. Royce Freeman, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to see the top rushing and the, <laughs> as I look over to our partners at KXO Radio, the top rusher wow. in the San Diego section for the next two years. That's just amazing. That is just amazing. They hit him in the backfield. They hit him at the line of scrimmage. They hit him a couple yards downfield. They hit him at Kim near no the goal line. Second count can be started. Nobody was close enough defensively. Lyle's going to swing left side. Robinson. Here is a backdoor lob there for Grant. They've been wanting that all game. And they got it, 50-42. They lulled you to sleep, and then they hit Grant on the back door. They trail by two. McMorrow's kick is on the way, and it is good. good. St. Augustine has their first lead of the game. 21 to 20 with 25 seconds to play the senior McMorrow with a huge kick not the longest of his career but the biggest of his career oh, St. Augustine leads it 21 to already lining up they won't even have to run that one more play they just act yeah, yes why bother so there you have it your five-time defending division three champions the Cathedral Catholic Dons running up over and through Olympian 41 to nothing here from Qualcomm Stadium. And Patriots down 21-17. Great ball game here. Dylan taking it, looking right, throwing it up top to Gaines. It will be caught by Gaines. Oh my goodness. 
It looked like the defender had it, but Gaines stole it away from him. Jason Gaines, are you kidding me, my friend? Oh, boy. It looked like for sure we had an interception by the Tories, but as they both were going to the ground, Jason Gaines just wrestled it away from him. Shane Dillon to Jason Gaines on an 11-yard play. Fanchon in the game, now out, replaced by Hayashi, the libero for defense. Wenzel's serve, championship point, ball up in the air. Hayashi's going to bring it back. Richards, deep one over and three. Free opportunity, look for Wallace, no, they go Becker. Hayashi, then tap over and two by Hollingsworth. Now look for Wallace for the match! Kathleen Wallace, no better way for the Bulls to finish it than giving it to their senior leader. 25-12, 25-15, and with eight straight points to close out their third straight D5 championship on a kill by Kathleen Wallace, 25-21 in game three. Branson has won the D5 title. To the backfield, it's Hernandez and Northcutt. Set to throw is Thomas, has time, goes for the home run. It's intercepted in the end zone. Seemed like it, they tried to go to Martin, and Martin slipped. Stockton, Hilmar, and Escalon. That's going to do it, folks. Victory formation, take a kneel. The clock comes out. The clock will tick down. The players jumping up at midfield. I think I see a, a Gatorade. Did, did we have a Gatorade shower? Uh, we most certainly did. Casey Taylor getting the shower there. Very much deserved. Down to 12. Great tackle there by Ronald Williams there to make the stop for Helix. And the Helix fans are starting to celebrate here. This is going to be the final play. Five seconds. Pow Pow will hand it off. And they're going to get in the end zone touchdown. That's Keegan who gets in, but that's going to be the end of the ball game. 44 to 6 will be the score. So Oceanside scores on the final play of the ball game. And gets a consolation prize just to, to make this is kind of say that, hey, we didn't get shut out. So 44 to 6 is your score. And Helix is celebrating on the sideline. Oceanside streak of seven straight championship games has been ended. Two minutes and five seconds left on the clock. Clock rolling, third down and 15 for the Patriots. Dylan, he's got time, steps up. He's going to chuck it deep. He's got a man open. Seth Collins with a diving catch. He hauls it in at the 25. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you right there. Dylan goes to show why he is a Division I prospect as he's able to step up, elude the pressure, see Collins down the field, and make the connection. Halftime at Levy Center, Central Coast Section Division II Boys Championship game. The Archbishop Mitty Monarchs of San Jose leading the Sarah Padres of San Mateo by a score of 26 to 20. Kirsten Fairchild, Casey Jackson. Casey, no one warming up. Instead, both teams electing to stay in the locker rooms as long as possible. What was the scoring news? Well, first of all, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that. Both teams yeah. come out, no warm up shots taken. Nothing done. Anyway, Caruso led Sarah with 12 points. Only three guys scored for Sarah. The difficulties in, in getting any balance there. And Gordon led uh, Mitty with seven points and nine rebounds. Sarah going left to right in there, traveling blue and gold. The number two seed trailing the top seeded Monarchs. I have a, thing, I have a feeling that you're going to see a lot more touches for, for Gordon here in the second half. Don't tell me we've got shot clock problems once again. Shot clock still ticking down and the shot clock as well. Um, I don't know if the officials realize that the clock kept ticking. If indeed it's 728, that means. 32 seconds. <laughs> Sarah has that three math left does on not the shot work. clock. <laughs> There's no logic in that math right there. 
I think they uh, started the clock too soon, something like that. I think they gave the possession to the wrong team and we're gonna start this over. Let's try again, it's the Monarchs ball starting the second half. Monarchs with a full eight minutes at its disposal. Bible, another turnover. Here is Caruso. Too hard, but the follow nicely done by Grossi. It's called running the floor. Excellent hustle. Four point lead for Mitty. Peters over to Vranikar. Sarah sticking with this man. Little body bump. Grossi called on the contact. First foul, second half. I think they're going to be extremely and acutely aware of Gordon. Granicar left all half. alone. Really been cold. He's a really fine shooter. The weak side board by Barsakini. Barsakini. Caruso with the nice move and willed it down. I love how he does it. He's four inches shorter, puts the body right into Gordon. No pump fakes, no nothing, just straight into him. Excellent, excellent approach. Gordon with the miss. <coughs> <coughs> Sarah is within two. <laughs> Chance to tie it. I love the way Sarah's come out. They've come out with a whole different attitude here in the second half. I love it. Much more competitive. Barsakini will head to the line to shoot two. Smitty with the foul. 24, Jordan White. Third personnel. White walking over to his head coach. One shot remaining, Jason Just like that, the Padres are within one. And again, there's no they know these teams just know each other so well. There's absolutely gonna be no surprises whatsoever. A 26-26 tie. Bible. Pushing the tempo. And the Sarah cheering section finally was something to cheer about. For three by Peters, nails it just like that. Mitty back out front. Had a nice game so far. Pretty reliable little jumper at the right at the elbow for Peters. White with Here the dish go. to Gordon. Five slam and jamma. <laughs> That was a little showy for my taste, but <laughs> pretty effective. He never does the same one twice a game. Good answer. The answer by Jimenez. Sarah within three. Bible losing the handle once again. It's like one speed. All out, excellent. He, he's fired up today as Jimenez on the foul. His third personal, and that'll sub in JJ. Bible, I have to say, having had a chance to watch him over the last few years, he's got a little extra pep in his step. You know Tonight, what? usually a little more composed. Yeah, yeah. Peters missing with the left hand. You know, I missed it first half. Peters had nine points. He's got 11 now. He's actually leading Mitty. The close range bucket for Grossi. Great take by Grossi We're all tied there. up at 31. Five minutes left to go in the third. White getting it to Gordon. Gordon. Didn't even get the shot off, but we'll head to the line. 
Gordon. That's on Caruso or Jaje. I think Gordon absolutely knows he's going to get contact anytime he goes to the hoop. Misses his first. I think that's four in a row now. 13 foul on Sarah. Mitty has committed one in the second half. 0 of 2. Overcompensating a little bit there. Difficulties from the free throw line continue for Mr. Gordon. Grossi, what a give Absolutely. to Caruso. Nicely done. Mitty calls a timeout, 4.35 left to go in the third quarter. Sarah on top, 33-31. Yeah, Sarah look, really has come up with the concept how they want to execute the half-court offense. Excellent. KBSports.com and the Play On Sports Network showcase great high school games every week. And now you can access our content using multiple platforms. Follow us on Facebook, get the latest KBC and play on news on Twitter or Cats highlights on high def and on YouTube. All of our content can now link to your favorite social media site. Share all high school action you see every week brought to you by your home from high school sports, kbsports.com and play on sports. Kirsten Fairchild's Casey Jackson. You're watching CIF Central Coast TV's live coverage of the Central Coast Basketball Championships from Santa Clara University. Recent exploits by Sarah. Sarah with the steal. She's got their rooting, rooting section going nuts over there. Gives it right back. Here's Bible, Bible pushing the tempo. Knocked out of bounds by Caruso. Great hustle there by Caruso running the floor. White. Caruso with the rebound. Barsakini, high off the glass, doesn't fall. Mitty still trailing by two. Can White change that here? Draws the contact, we'll head to the line to shoot two. That is the fourth Padres foul. I think everybody's expecting a little alley-oop for Gordon on, the, on that break, didn't get it. Third personal. But White certainly drew the contact well. Rewarded with a couple of free throws. White, to the line, White, one of the best defenders in the West Catholic Athletic League, a very physical player. Misses his first. Always happens when build up. <laughs> Get a nice big build up. Clank. Zamoro <laughs> replaces Barsakini in the lineup for Sarah. One a two effort from White. Sarah lead now just one. 3.53 left to go in the third. Fifteen to shoot. Good look. Found the look they were looking for, and JJ puts his team up by three. A little more patient here in the second half in the half court set for A little more organized Sarah. perimeter Absolutely. passing as well. Absolutely. JJ once again. Number 40, Matt JJ, fourth personal. Yeah, I was thinking that was his fourth personal. Fifth foul is Jimenez, who has three, replaces Jaje. Sarah's going to go through some big man guarding Gordon. Left loose is Peters for the bucket. Again, Sarah's lead clipped to one. Peter's been a nice scoring surprise for Mitty tonight. Giving him a good punch. 
Wide open look. Miller drains the three. Andre Miller for three. Four point deficit for Mitty, 245 left to go in the third quarter. The steal by Miller, can he catch up with it? He does. A little shake and bake there. Jimenez. Wow. The friendly roll, <laughs> and Sarah came out of the locker room with it dialed in. Mitty calls a timeout, 2.28 left to go in the third. The Monarchs down by six. They're on fire, feeling good about themselves. Going the right direction. Need a highlight video for your athlete? Working to earn that four-year scholarship? Then you want to contact kbcsports.com. KBC we can provide recruiting video for any athlete in any sport. Not only that, but we give you your own recruiting page right on our website. No more, e no more mailing DVDs to colleges. Instead, email coaches the link to your personal page. For more information, including pricing, contact us at recruits at kbcsports.com or call us at 619-677. 3246. Alongside Casey Jackson, I'm Kirsten Fairchild. 40 to 34, Sarah leads it. Trailed by six after each of the quarters in the first half. But the Padres, whatever head coach Rapp drew up in the locker room at the break, paying off here. Mitty brings Vranikar in. Thomas Short out on the floor for the Monarchs as well. See how Mitty handles adversity. Vranikar going baseline. Offensive. Player control. Second personal, second foul. I, I don't understand how Brandicars are arguing to really cut and dry. Player control foul. All the momentum on Sarah's side right now. A little surprised that Gordon's not getting a few more touches. I was thinking the exact same thing. There's a rebound by Gordon. Stolen by Miller. Miller throws it into traffic, but it ends up with Crusoe, backs <laughs> iron, and here's Gordon. Here's a way for Gordon to get himself a few touches. That's offensive again. Oh. Traveling. Oh, first time Gordon really didn't like the call as Barsacchini replaces Miller, who had some great minutes. DeMonico in as well. Peterson returns for Mitty. 127 left to go in the third. Sarah with the ball and a six point lead. Thinks better of it. Three-point attempt into the hands of Ranikar. Good, Got the shot they wanted, good half-court set. Can't complain about that possession. Ranikar working down low. Sarah found, Ranikar will shoot two with 51 seconds left to go in the third. Brandicar showing a little more resolve, trying to not settle for the, you know, the 20 footer. And it's really what they need from him. And I'm still a little puzzled whether it, it, I, I just would make the, make the ball, ball go through Gordon a little bit more. Farrell checks in down low for Mitty. It's Vranikar with a chance to make this a four point game. That was the 16th foul on Sarah. 
he does. Clutch free throws by Van Ranikar. Barsakini, high off the glass, into the hands of Peters. Shot clock, one second differential from game clock, which is at 28. Now the clock is turned off as Midian pulls within two after the Peterson bucket. Great take of the hoop by Peterson. Almost didn't look like it was gonna get it off from up here. Showed his strength. Five seconds. Would have been huge for Sarah as Branikar holds on to it. Sarah with a two point lead after three quarters of play. Two West Catholic Athletic League teams doing battle. One quarter left, a CCS D2 champion will be crowned. Catch the best of Central Coast section basketball on CIF Central. Central Coast TV. You can watch a replay of today's game after each one concludes. Plus check out game highlights, player of the game interviews and more. Order a DVD or Blu-ray disc of the game. We're your home for high school sports. CIF Central Coast TV. Kirsten Fairchild's former Santa Clara Bronco, Casey Jackson on CIF Central Coast TV. The nightcap has turned out to be as close as the previous games. Nothing has been decided until the final quarter here at Levy Center today. Well, it's championship basketball. It's the way it should be. It's exciting. It's what we want to see. Nothing worse than a real blowout in one of these games. Where, but, you know, we got one and two. Tight game. Great rooting sections from both schools. A lot of college coaches here. Just notice the Santa Clara Broncos staff to our left. Drooling over a few of the players here. Perfect opportunity to showcase this talent. Fourth quarter underway. Sarah with the first possession. Up by two on the top seated, seated Midi Monarchs. Miller back into the game. Grossi nice will head to the line to shoot two. Nice take by Grossi. Actually, great play. You know, Gordon sitting out right now, taking a breather. Got to attack the basket when he's out. Farrell called on the foul. Mitty's third team foul. Be interesting to see how long they keep Gordon out. Not long, I don't think, if we continue to have a deficit. To a two effort from Grossi, Sarah up 42-38. Bible begins the quarter on the bench as well. Peters working hard down low and a chance to make it three. Peters been their go-to go -to guy here. He's, he's responded really well. Sacrusa with three, Zamora with three, JJ with four for Sarah. Monarchs within one, thanks to Thomas Peters. Having a nice game. Grossi to Caruso. Game plan working in the second half for Sarah. Miller, long distance two, back iron, gets his own rebound. Bound, tries it again, still off. Peters with the weak side board. Miller just couldn't get him to drop. Mitty throws it away. Oh. That was a little <laughs> dangerous. <Close>. Say what? <laughs> Jimenez, 4-3, Sarah back out by four, 6.44 left to go. 
Got their crowd all pumped up now. Waiting to check Gordon in. Grossi. Is this a foul on Farrell? Yes. It is. 6.28 left to go. Bible and Gordon check in. Sarah Ball with a 45-41 lead. It's the fourth midi foul. Farrell's third as he heads to the bench. Caruso. Possession and a four point lead. Again, a low scoring game. A lot of low scoring games today. 10 to shoot for Sarah. Grossi uh, called on the walk. Gordon. Yeah, got a little stagnant playing there. Tough defense. Yeah. He's a great defender. 6'8. Great body position. And probably his strongest asset is his, or his feet. He just His feet move so well, never stop moving. Very light of foot. Yep. Bible and Gordon treat us to another alley-oop, or is it Peters rims out the three, but Gordon collects. Gordon, again, just a whole nother kind yep, of athlete. Absolutely. Grossi with three, Caruso with three. Again, Jaja with four. Let's see if the free throw. Gordon free really throw struggling, struggling. Absolutely. From the foul line. Just saw him shake his head a little bit like, yikes, what is going on here? Still can't hit. We're going to have a violation, lane violation against Jimenez. Gordon will get another opportunity. I'm not sure he wants it at this point. <laughs> I think that's seven or eight in a row. Really uncharacteristic. Third time wasn't yeah, yeah. the charm. That's it. It's in between the ears now. That's a, you know, when it you start, you missed seven, eight in a row like that. It's it's all about confidence with those free throws. As you hear the chant automatic from <laughs> Sarah. Ouch. Caruso. You got to love some of the cleverness of a lot yeah, of these absolutely. cheers. Absolutely. Three. Handled by Caruso. Relentless. Comes down with Peters. Five minutes. Five minutes left to go. Midi ball trailing by four. You know. Sarah came away with nothing there, but great play. Peters, Peters is everything for him tonight. So consistent for Mitty tonight. Sarah lead now two. Barsakini. Nice. What a move to Caruso. Oh. Everything but in. <laughs> Gordon just right at the last second when he thought that going down gets a hand on it. Denied him. Fourth foul on Grossi. It's one and one. Actually, now maybe they didn't call that on Grossi. If it's Caruso, that's tough with four fouls. Bye. Caruso, their strongest offensive threat, will have a seat with 4.30 left to go as Jaja comes out. He's playing with four. This could be the battle of you attrition of the big guys <laughs> for Sarah trying to guard Gordon. Yeah. You got you to think it's going to happen sooner or later there. Too good a player for that to happen. Cheers from the rafters for a made free throw. Chance to tie it for Gordon. There he does. Go. He's got it figured out now. 
45-45, you only get the uh, impression he's gonna have plenty of tri more tries as well. Grossi gets denied by Gordon, ouch. <laughs> when Grossi listed at 6'7", the tallest player on the Sarah team, you think that happens to him a lot? Not much. I think it happens happened a few times with uh, Mr. Gordon on the court, though. He's going to give it another try. Nope, gives it up to Miller. I think Gordon got away with one there. JJ is going to foul out of this game. 4.05 left to go. Sarah is running out a big man. Well, they're going to, Mitty's going to be in the double bonus the rest of the game. Personal. Excellent point. Yes, double bonus for Mitty. Double bonus situation. That hurts with four minutes to go, and half of the last period can be a double bonus. You know, it's an aggressive defense they play also. So. We have not seen Luke. Longinati wearing number 55. He is a six foot five senior center. He remains on the bench as Crusoe comes out playing with four. 405 left to go. Peters at the line. Chance to break this tie. He does. For as good as Gordon has been able to get over the semester suffering from mono, Peters has improved leaps and bounds as well. Mitty out in front by two, 4.05 left to go. Sarah calls a timeout, 30 second. They'll have one of each. Mitty has two full timeouts to work with. 4.02 left to go in the game. Mitty leads at 47.45. You can watch highlights or a replay of today's game in our on-demand section and you can also buy a DVD or Blu-ray of today's game right on CF, CIFCentralCoast.tv Click on buy DVD and you can order today's game right now. Have a game that lasts a lifetime. Brought to you by CIF Central Coast TV. Casey, your thoughts? Well, I think with with momentum may have shifted just by Gordon hitting two free throws after having extreme difficulties the whole game with his free throws. Uh, I think that's everything for him, and and Peters has just really come up huge for him in the championship game here. Sarah needs an answer. Say goodbye to Henry Caruso. That'll hurt him big right there. 346 left to go in the ball game and Sarah's gonna have to try and figure it out without the sparkling play of Henry Caruso. Well, and I think you can expect a certain amount of the bigs for any opponent that's got the the big men that Mitty has, and, and they're going to be in foul trouble. And they, you know, it's he's he's lasted as long as he has, three and a half minutes to go in the game, three forty-five to go, and you know, played a solid game. He, he was, was their really, biggest threat. Yeah. yeah, in the first half in particular, much smaller lineup for Mitty as the six foot. DeMonico in, so it'll be a four guard system for Sarah. Leaving Grossi to guard Gordon and Vranikar, who stands six foot six, and Peters, who is six foot six. Mitty's got some bigs. This is what I thought they were going to do. Make sure Gordon's got the ball. I think it's a great, great place to start. Shot clock down to seven. 
Great finish. Midi out by four. Miller, who's really been the true only all outside threat, Sarah's going to have to look to get him an open shot. Franiker doesn't like it. Only the sixth midi foul. Franiker just showed great restraint. He wanted to let everybody know that that was a player control foul and showed great restraint and just keeping his mouth shut. Actually, correction, the fifth midi foul. 2.56 left to go. Sarah with a fresh shot clock. Bible guarding Miller. Marsakini with the runner will head to the line to shoot two. That's what they need right now, stuff like that. Heady play by Marsakini there. Number three, Connor Peterson. First personal foul, six team foul. Jason Marsakini. Next foul puts Sarah in the bonus. Got to knock down those to free throws. One and two effort. It's a three-point game. Mitty leads as Zamora checks in for Sarah. These two teams split their round-robin meeting in West Catholic Athletic League play. Turnover. Good, good half court set, D set there for Sarah. Really needed that. Good That's call. Be called. Absolutely good call. On Bible. That is the seventh foul. So Miller heads to the line to shoot. One and one. Andre Miller, the five foot ten junior guard. Need these. No Good start. doubt. <laughs> Chance to make it a one point game. Ah. Nope. Gordon with the rebound. The oohs and ahs, but Gordon gives Good it up. Good recovery by Grossi Miller. there. Miller. Oh. What? Oh. A hand by Zamora. Daintily, gently, elegantly with the lay in. All tied up at 49. Mitty wants a timeout. They'll have one remaining 202 left to go. 49 49. That was really close. Him and it was, uh, Jimenez was closing on him quick. Mitty just wanted to get the timeout call. Really close. They, that was almost a turnover for Mitty. Looking for a great place to advertise your business while reaching the, the greater high school community? Then you want to advertise on CIFCentralCoast.tv. We have great rates for your business while giving you the opportunity to get your message across to a very important demographic. For more information, give us a call at 619-677-3246. CIFCentralCoast.tv bringing you Central Coast Section Division II Boys Championship Game Midi, the defending champ. Sarah looking for an upset. Casey, your thoughts? <laughs> Tight as it could be. <laughs> you know, you, it, again, this, this is a typical Catholic League game. Under two minutes to go, both teams under 50. Every possession is just everything to the team. It's just everyone's so important at this point in time in the game. See who see who reacts the best. See who's got it at the end. Be fun watching. Out of the timeout, Mitty, less than two to go. Great pass, great look. Vranikar doesn't finish. Grossi gets fouled. It's Peterson committing the infraction. One and one, 
for Grossi. That's the eighth team foul. Mitty already in the double bonus. Steven Grossi to the line, shooting one and one. Grossi's had a really, really nice game under the basket. Rebounding the ball. Misses the front end and Gordon is there. Minute Not 45 left to go, all tied up at 49. After watching Grossi shoot his free throws last few times, I thought both of those would be down. Ten on the shot clock. Gordon not buying <laughs> what Sarah fans are selling, trying to count him down. Gordon with three left on the shot, minute 15 left on the game. It's a 51-49 lead. Miller. Too much to handle inside for Sarah. With Caruso out of the game. One minute remaining. Grossi briefly opened down low. That would have been huge. Instead, it's Gordon there for the defensive board. 46 seconds remaining in the game. Mitty up 51-49. No call, four point lead, 35 seconds remaining. Sarah calling the timeout. No real surprise there. Gordon getting two touches, scoring a couple big buckets here at the end. Sarah's gonna be up against it now. Padres, 23 and five, the number two seed. Only one game today, Casey. Did not feature a one and two seed. It's number three, Sacred Heart Prep, meeting number four, Half Moon Bay, and boys D4 action. Every game has been close. That was an exciting game. The way, after we had the, the, the SoCal game, the Soquel victory and the, the then the Half Moon Bay. They, both groups, both both uh, excited fans, just just was so electric in the gymnasium for that Half Moon Bay game. Wonderful game, really entertaining. Thirty-two seconds. Sarah trails by four. Looking for an open shot. Sure, Good. they want Miller to take it. 20 seconds, Miller for three, gets bumped, no call. Yep. Someone's gonna have to foul, and it's Grossi with 14.6 seconds. Sarah put up a great fight. Actually, they gave it to Jimenez. That's the fourth personal. Just got a little stagnant on that last possession, Sarah. And the Mitty played a great half-court defensive set on him, and Sarah got a little bit stagnant. White, the senior at the line. Five-point game, 14.6 seconds remaining. Rims out, five point game, 14 seconds remaining. Jimenez for three. Second chance, nope, here's Gordon. Gordon, Gordon still playing, he'll head to the line to shoot two with a half a second left on the scoreboard. Mitty fans are loving it. I think Gordon's looking for a little reprieve here. Actually, a nice little chance for him to hit a couple free throws and make up for that eight in a row he missed. Official asking Sarah fans, excuse me, Sarah players to come back. I think I have a feeling I know what Gordon, Gordon's going to be working on first at practice. He'll be shooting about 50, 50 to 100 free throws. This is his first. 
Doesn't even try for his second. It, well, they're gonna say, even though the clock never started, ball game midi. Despite a late charge by Sarah, midi repeats as the D2 champ with a 54-49 victory over the Sarah Padres. Yeah, the seating li lived to be true. Mitty hung in there. I don't think they played their best. I don't think either team played their best. Sarah came out and, and really responded well in the second half, made it a really good game. But uh, Gordon kind of took over the game at the end. Stay tuned for the CIF Central Coast.tv's player of the game interview. Mitty, a 54-49 winner over Sarah at Santa Clara. Fourth and 10 from the 41 yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, firing, incomplete okay. intended for Nolan. No penalty flags on the field. Mar Vista will take over on downs, and Jordan Lertique will take that knee. And the Mar Vista Mariners knock off the number two seeded St. Augustine Saints at Mesa College in a dominating performance on both sides of the football for Mar Vista. They trailed 14 to nothing and came back. Again, down 2 0, facing adversity. And they've really just turned the table around since game number three. Set an attack, great block made back inside the Maverick zone. A chance there by, uh, by Bosback back inside the Maverick zone. Ball attack there by Bosback. A second opportunity by Bosback. Lift violation, call. Uh, winner, oh. it's the over, the over the net call. Oh my goodness. Bosback reached over on the attack. A Maverick Air wraps up the title for the Presentation Panthers. A 15-9 victory in game number five, and they wrap it up coming back from 2-0 down match-wise and take it three games to two. 36-35 and driving, and oh, baby! Shrigley with the jam, and it was with emphasis. And it's the foul, and listen to these fans. Do you know who's standing up right behind us? Tony Bland, who is the head recruiter for San Diego State. <laughs> I think he's drooling. Somebody get that man Ooh. a napkin. Quick score on this drive. There goes a hand off to Zeller, trying to go straight ahead, but he is met by Wall. Now he breaks out to the outside, gets across the 30, 35, on the right, 40, midfield. He's running down the sidelines. He's going to go all the way. As he's at the 10-5, touchdown! Patrick Zeller got he stood up at the line of scrimmage and broke out to his left to the far sidelines. And he was in a foot race and he went all the way for the touchdown. Broke a tackle and made it nice and showed his speed as he got outside for the touchdown. Back in the backfield to the left is Campbell. Hernandez takes a snap, play action to Campbell. Looks down the field. Now here comes the pressure. He's going to be hit. He breaks the tackle, rolls left. Now he's going to cut up field. He's going to break another tackle, and then another tackle down the sideline. Gets a block inside the five. What a touchdown! Hernandez goes 33 yards in spectacular fashion, breaking four tackles along the way, including two in the backfield, and Hilltop has tied this one up at 29. And reasonably so, he's been doing a good job of leading this offense. Looking for his first touchdown pass of the season for Ray Hudson, and Ray Hudson gets both feet inside the end zone. Touchdown Foothill. Like you said earlier, it's 6-2 body frame, and can probably, in what, you, what we just saw there was getting Randy Moss, was what we call getting Moss. Um, clearly just leaped over the defender there, landed both feet in, feet in bounds. Grant with a big, strong defensive rebound. He brings it back down the floor again in another slam dunk. Jeremy Grant can run the point and he can fly. Huge dunk, two big dunks in the last Bullard minute. Bullard trying to close it out. Deep ball, up in the air, cram. Bringing it back, Arbizo. Cram over in three, free opportunity. Look for Rotobaugh, no, pass middle, Weimer! Ball game. 
25-19. Foothill wins it three games to one. Because this kid has definitely proven that he he um he can make things happen here in this ball game. They will go with him. Bula Graft on a stretch run, just breaking tackles. The little man is in the clear. To Tory territory, the 25, the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Knights. What a run, the freshman, Bula Graft. Ooh, I tell you what. There were at least three times on that on that run that he should have gone down or he should have been wrapped up. Missed tackles there. Cost, cost La Jolla Country Day as Bula Graft, the freshman running back for Bishops, is able to take it in. And, and that was a determined run there, Andy, by. So first and ten. Brandon Lewis in the shotgun. Has time to throw. And he'll fire, and he has a mad diving catch. Did he hold on to it? He did. What a catch from Kendall Keys. And that may be the KBC Sports Player of the Week. <laughs> what a catch by he laid himself wow. out there. And a great throw, as you said. Read, read it nicely, did Lewis, and really caught his receiver on the go. And just kind of put it out there right on the outskirts of his fingertips. He laid out, and he made it. No he doubt. might be called upon to make a crucial kick. Second down and eight after the two-yard gain on the receiver screen. And Ooh. Paulson fires across the right seat for Jack Finney, who makes the catch. Stiffs on the defender at the 50 and is finally brought down at the Amador Valley 45-yard line. Flags flying later on the go play. For it. Fourth and three. They figure three is easier to get than the field goal at this point. And it's Paulson looking for Finney. Right seam, side, right seam, touchdown. Jack Finney makes the catch. Bounces off a defender. A 23-yard pass and catch from Paulson to Finney. And the Foothill Falcons are back out in front. They certainly are. Finney lining up a tight end. I had a feeling that Paulson was going to look right side there as Chase Miller was lined up. Receive a far side. But instead it was Finney straight to the post. And Paulson picks him out in stride again. The third catch on the drive for He's Finney. give it to Tyree on an exchange against the zone. Do a little three-man weave. This is Tyrell back with it. Tyrell's going to go lob back door. Tyree Robinson with a flush. Now that was nice. Very nice design play. Uwaba. Uwaba back there. Bogart takes a snap. He's going to run the play. He's going to throw. He's got a man open at the 10. It's under thrown. It's incomplete. No, or is it caught? It is a catch. Wow, juggling catch inside the five-yard line. Maliga. Was that Maliga pulling that one in? It is Maliga. Boy, that ball was deflected by, by one of the Falcons. And then Maliga, he lands on the ground and pulls it in. What a catch. Set up with three men in the backfield, back to the wing. This time inside counter to Telefaro. No, they're going to throw this one. He's got a man open. And a great, what a great, what a catch! What a grab by tight end Joe Gigantino. He must have bobbled that ball four times in the air. And he was actually tipped by the defender and had the presence of mind to keep his concentration and make the grab. Unbelievable catch. And the ball at the 29-yard line of the Eagles, and you can see the defense, they're still bewildered. How did he come up with that Unfazed, grab? Unfazed, even with two defenders around him and four big, that's so unconventional for a guy to handle the ball so well. January oh. with a one-hand jam. He was not going to be denied there. Coming over was Milmo. Bradshaw Christian is going to bring the starting unit out on the field one more time just to take a knee. Ten seconds left. They better hurry it up. Actually, they're going to try a field goal for Lawson. They're, not, they're going to run out of time. Are they going to take? There's a snap, and they aren't even going to get the kickoff. They tried to hustle Lawson out there for a field goal opportunity to see if they could get her one. But it does not matter. They don't get the point off in time. Drew Rickert just got the Gatorade shower on the sideline. Bradshaw Christian is your winner. 62-6, to the final score. They are your D6 Titleist this year. You're in 2000. Five seconds left. Clock winding down. Poway. Say 17 points, 16 rebounds. Where are you here? Do, 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 do. Aaron Gordon. Fourth and 10 from the 41-yard line for St. Augustine. Kennedy dropping back to pass. Looking left, 
Firing, incomplete okay. intended for. Hi, Aaron Gordon here. The championship Archbishop Midi Monarchs are CIF Central Coast TV player of the game, although he gives props to his teammate Thomas Peters. Aaron, congratulations on a great effort, 17 points, 16 rebounds. What did it mean to come in here and face a team that you know so very well, but the stakes haven't been higher than they were tonight? Uh, this isn't our goal. We're, our goal is a state championship. So, I mean, coming into this game, we knew uh, we weren't going to hype ourselves up like this is a championship game. This is the last game. I mean, they're a great team. I have a feeling we're going to see them another time before uh, the end of our road. I don't think fans would mind that just <laughs> one bit. What was different about Sarah coming out in that third quarter? They really seemed to come out with a kind of a different game plan, a lot more patience, working the ball around the perimeter. How did it feel for you out on the floor? Um, I think out of halftime, we just came out with no energy. I don't really think it was about them and how they changed their game plan. I think it was about us, and we just came out with no em energy, and we were kind of rushing into our shots. I know earlier in the year you had mono when you were down in San Diego. How hard was it? It seems like everyone practically who went through high school perhaps had a bout with mono or had <laughs> friends who did so and just know the, the, the weariness and the fatigue. How were you able to keep such a high standard of play throughout the season? Uh, basically, when I didn't have my uh, legs under me and I didn't have my... Uh, kind of like motor to go. I just kind of had to adapt my game and I kind of took it more to a perimeter uh, and slasher uh, kind of physical person. How good is this MIDI team? Oh, we're great. We, I mean, when we play, when we play good, I think, I don't think anybody in the state can tell, or touch us, but that's knocking on wood. I have to ask you because this place exploded when you made those two free throws. Was <laughs> it a little bit of boost or what were you thinking? Oh my goodness. That free throw line was scaring me today. I'm not even going to lie, but, uh, I just need to get into the gym and work on my free throws, man. Uh, I, in practice, I can hit like 20 in a row, but then once it comes to game time, I kind of get in my head a little bit and just don't uh, shoot the same way every single time. So uh, it's bad. I'm going to give you an opportunity. When we informed Aaron that he was our player of the game, he disagreed. You tell me who your player of the game was. Uh, I give it to anybody on my team but me, but specifically Thomas Peters. I think he played a really great game. He knocked down big shots for us. Uh, I, I kind of... I got the rebounds and I scored a little bit. I got uh, the two buckets at the end, but all around I'll give the game to Thomas Peters. And Thomas Peters did not play basketball last year. Oh no, he played JV. Oh, he played JV first year on varsity for a senior. Aaron, congratulations the rest of the way. Thank you. And congratulations on representing your team and being our CIF <laughs> Central Coast TV. That does it, Midi, a 54-49 winner over an upstart Sarah team. On behalf of my partner tonight, Casey Jackson, our crew, John Boucher, our engineer, Brian Carter, big thanks to everyone here at Levy Center, including the Central Coast section, Commissioners Ray Mialovich, Nancy Lazenby Blazer, and Steve Felios. So long from Santa Clara, Midi gets it done against their West Catholic Athletic League rival tonight. Thank you.